Welcome to, uh, to Brown Point History, our first session uh, today, and it's going to be held once a month on Thursday, the third Thursday of each month, and this is the same day that we have our board meeting this afternoon, so that's why we did this. And uh, uh, the topics will range from, I don't know, we'll put them out, uh, Emily will advertise. Um, we had one scheduled for January, but um, Charles, Charlie Parson got COVID. He was going to talk about Lake Agassi and geology. And oh, yeah. Like that. So he'll come back later on. Um, next month is uh, going to be Barry Babcock, and he's going to talk about some early explorers, Radisson and Rosier, Rosier mm. who they think made it into the state of Minnesota area in 1660-something. And uh, then uh, the next month, which is uh, April, will be Lois Jenkins, and she knows a lot about Lake of the Woods because she went up there every year for millions of years <laughs> 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 because she went to uh, the uh, camp, teenagers, other uh, Merkins camp yeah. all the time, and she used to work at the Newman Center. And then she knows something about the other history of Fort St. Charles, if you've you ever been there, around on that northwest angle. Mm -hmm. It's got a big history there. And there's a reef you know, that's reconstructed. Uh, but today, we're going to enjoy a little presentation from my friend Ken Litza, college roommate. Oh, wow. Uh, and he, uh, We've known each other since the 60s. And uh, August 66? Something like that. <laughs> there was a three story house, that's still there, on Bixby Avenue, um, run by a lady named Peg Bussey. She was from uh, Lake George, the Fort. And her brother in law was Don Anderson, who taught English. Don was married to her sister. She had 11 of us in there at the time we lived there. Wow. Three-story, board room, right at 13-something, big speed. 13? So 1,300 block? 15, yeah. We, clock and a half, the deputy hall is all Yeah, was right. Real, we had some really, uh, well, outrageous sometimes. No. Debates, <laughs> and yeah. others. Yeah, so we're going to go for lunch after. Red Wilson was your neighbor. Huh? Red Wilson was your neighbor? Uh, he was out about that block. Judge... Uh, Chris. No, no uh, Waddell. Waddell was, Waddell was there. Huh? Yeah. Waddell was next door. Lyle Aubrey, uh, and, and Lyle Aubrey was there, too. Okay. Yep. And I was That's around the block, block around. Around the Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know where you guys were. Yeah. They put their garbage <laughs> and, uh, in our cans. <laughs> <laughs> All those beer cans. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't that... It wasn't like that. No. It wasn't. It was pretty tame. Yeah. Yeah. One guy drank Coke. Yeah. Oh, one guy had to have uh, three cases of Coke in his room. Bottles. At all oh, times. yeah. Yeah, bottles only in those and days. And he drank all of it. Wow. Every day, probably a case and a half. Wow. And he was about this big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That guy. Hmm. He's still remember, really he's still alive. I can't remember his name. Don't know. <laughs> you know, there's some of them we've kept in touch with, but others not. And uh, so uh, uh, Ken and I have kind of kept in touch. There was a few years we didn't because he's had, he's had a million jobs. <laughs> he's been an educator, and he's been a director of programs and this and that in the cities and elsewhere. At one time, he ran for an office in Whiter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was a principal at uh, Central Elementary, mm -hmm. was it, for oh. a few years here. Oh, yeah. And then he was a principal, my principal, up in Red Lake. Oh, okay. Middle school. Wonderful. And I taught there for a long time when he was there. And uh, so he's got lots of experiences to talk about 
plus growing up over in, in uh, Pine Point, Ponsford. Mm. You know, so there's a lot of, and I don't know exactly what Ken's going to talk about because he, there's so many choices. So I just said, go for it. Good. So Thank that's you. That's what we're going to do. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, oh, I should introduce. Yeah, this is Ken. <laughs> <laughs> so give Ken a warm welcome. He lives in Cass Lake and uh, retired educator is uh, basically uh, how he likes to be talking to both and all. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure what you guys expect or uh, would like to hear. Your wisdom. <laughs> It's going to be a short meeting. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I was born in Whiter, at the, in the village of Whiter, on the reservation, in uh, October of 1945. And it was uh, right at the end of the war. My dad came home. My folks are from a village called Pine Point, which is right on the north, no, south east corner of the White Earth Reservation. Osford is a little town just off the border of the reservation. <clears throat> so you go north of Osford, and there's Pine Point. That's where I grew up. That's, uh, it, was, uh, it was a good time for me. And I have happy memories of growing up there. And I remember my first memories, you know, I don't know, I suppose everyone has those first memories when you suddenly realize you're a being, you know, <laughs> and I think I was about two and a half, three years old, and I was standing in the uh, there was a log house that my grandfather, great grandfather, had built. And my parents were living there. I was, you know, but I was picking, picking the chalking in between the logs. And I can remember doing this, you know, <laughs> that white stuff coming out, whatever it was. That was my first memory. Hmm. And uh, my parents, I love my parents, but at that time they were, um, uh, they were drinkers, so I stayed with my grandpa and grandmother, most of my you with so I learned a lot from them. My uh, grandma and my grandfather they were uh, my teachers. They helped me understand who I was. How I fit in, and they introduced me to everything, you know. And my grandma met him when I was in school over here. Yeah. You know. Yeah, when I was in the North Coast. Right. Yeah. She 
who is, uh, they're all wonderful people. It must be me. <laughs> and uh, so I learned from an early age. to pay attention to, you know, everything, you know, what people are wearing, you know, not, not in the sense of the, how to get along, how to act, how to behave, you know, and it wasn't uh, you know, a harsh kind of So I learned from them. My grandfather's father was a quarter Irish guy from Canada. I don't know how he ended up in Whiter, but somehow he uh, met his mo my grandfather's mother somewhere over there. I never did uh, learn how that would happen, but anyway. Her name was Lillian. Lillian Findy. So they they had a uh, my grandma and my my grandfather my grandfather uh, were allotted land on the southwest corner of. Mini Point Lake, and in between Round Lake and Mini Point Lake. Mm -hmm. And we still have the land there. Right. You do? Yeah. 80 acres there. Good. Thank you. Uh, One of the few who yeah, still has yeah, this yeah. lot. In the yeah. And uh, my, uh, on my grandma's side, she she come from her her father's name was George Lightning, and her mother's name was uh, Catherine. She was a fine day, oh, uh, which is another story. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of fine days around. You know? Oh yes, from still are. White, Whiter, Beach Lake, Red Lake. You ever wonder where that name come from? I still do wonder. <laughs> well, from what I understand, well, the findings come from a man who was uh, an offspring of uh, Chief Pogonagizhi, <laughs> the younger. Oh. His name was Minogiji, which means good day or fine day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's where the name comes from. And then spread out all over. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, good, good skies from that lake, I think, are. Yeah. You know, that's the same name. Yeah. But anyway, that's just like. Lightning, I've heard that name up around War Road, right? There's, yeah. there's quite a family yeah. of uh, We're related to them. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. When we were in school, there was a Marie. Yeah, that's oh. cousin. Cousin. Yeah. She was from up there. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Real, real pretty. Did she? Yes. She got married at the Newman Center? Yes, she had a white leather wow. um, beaded uh, dress. Oh. Yeah. She was very pretty. Oh, yes. Oh. Not like her cousin. <laughs> <laughs> my my she daughter was. changed her name to Lightning. Did she? After she got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, so. 
like small world, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> come from that community village. There's a lot of uh, not just family, but extended family. You know, it was uncles and aunts and cousins and, and people that were. You know, I don't know. It's a fantastic feeling to be part of this community and not have to knock or you know, a door, you know, or to enter. You know, you're just part of it. You're just there. You it becomes a, a safe place. A, you know, secure and everyone. Participate in the rising. You know, at rising time, we all camp together. We camp at different places. Uh, I don't know. It's always, always an exciting time in the fall to uh, go make camp for rising. We go camp for you know, three, four weeks. Make rice. Depending on where the lake uh, rice was, in the spring, the, uh, I don't know, my grandparents uh, existed out the land so they moved. We could uh, make uh, maple syrup, syrup in the spring. March, uh, the old man would take us out, me and our, our cousins, we'd have to go out and shovel uh, the road into the, where the shack was, so we'd get in there and start getting ready to make uh, uh, sugar. So, Those great big kills? Yeah. yeah. All that. I don't know how they, uh, I know one kettle. <coughs> I remember Grandpa got a kettle from a farmer who didn't use it anymore. So I don't know what he gave for it. Mr. Grandpa would get these. Uh, Cans from the school, you know, they'd open these, I don't know what size are those, those big cans. Gallon probably. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, but they have a number. Number 10. Oh, a number, yes, that'll tell you now. Oh, I can't remember where it was, mm -hmm. but we'd, she'd go get those, say those, and then in the spring, you know, clean them and everything, and then we'd haul them out to the camp and, and uh, get uh, sat with it. That was all a little chore. Then trapping, hunting. I learned from my grandpa, my uncles, how to hunt, trap, do all that. How to pay attention to different things in the woods. I don't have to get lost. <laughs> Which I did once. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I told Grandpa, I didn't get lost. I, I was a little bewildered, but <laughs> my ally you know, was a. I was so deep in the woods, I didn't know where I was. My uncle, I could hear him hollering way off in the distance. Just barely hear him. And I kind of followed where he's. I could. I come out 
And he was way on the other side of a little lake. Oh, so he said, stay there, I'll come get you. So, I was just a young guy. But, uh, that was scary. Yeah. <laughs> so, I learned how to hunt, fish, you know, the... I remember watching my grandma during, uh, let's see, right when I... Just before it starts freezing on the, the lake, we go uh, build a fish camp, a shack, out on uh, Any Point Lake. So, in the I used to ask her, how, how do you get the net under the, under the ice, Grandma? Mm -hmm. So she showed me, she, she had a, a, something that floated, I can't remember what to get, like a jug, plastic jug or something. And then a big long rope, she'd uh, go on the boat and anchor that one hand down, you know, with the float thing. And then, as long as her neck was, and then another float, and then after the ice froze, she, you know, mark where the the buoys were. And then uh, she did a cut, cut that one end out, both ends out. You know, so then she could uh, hook the the net, yeah, and then pull it through, and then have a rope and put it back in there. Yeah. Uh, uh, what kind of what what did you uh, smoke? Smoke them? Smoke fish? Or she froze them. Froze them. Then she go sell them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Finlanders up in Monaga, like. Oh. <laughs> so, I miss home. <laughs> but uh, the way she net fish is way different than what, what, the way they do now. She had uh, cedar floats, she called them. They're, you might have them here, I don't know. But they're, uh, they look like swords. Oh, they're about that long, flat, and she tied those on the top of a, a net, and she used weed group. Weed group is a, a string, natural string, that you tie onto rocks, and then you tie that on the bottom of the net, and you, I, saw, I remember asking her, why do we have that float, that stick, you know? She said, so, you know, when the net is in the water and these floats are up here, the fish won't go up there. They'll go through it into the net. Mm -hmm. And she was always, uh, don't touch that, you know, you, you uh, contaminate. <laughs> you get your scent on there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, learn how to do that. Just make uh, snowshoes. Make snowshoes. Walk in the snow. <clears throat> learn how to trap. Trapping was, that to be fun, mm -hmm. you know, it was, uh, I don't know, one year I trapped, let's see, 33 mink, uh, uh, muskrats, 
over 900 hmm. muskrats in uh, beaver. I can't remember how many beaver once. And then, uh, uh, otter. Mm-hmm. Poor otter. Mink? Uh, I yeah, used to get uh, a permit to trap on Tamarack Wildlife Refuge, which is uh, just south of the Hoyter, just off on, it overlaps, but we used to uh, have a lottery for mm-hmm. permits. I was fortunate one year. But was this through the tribe, the lottery? Yeah. And for racing, did you have to get a license? Me? Hmm? State? No. You were all, you just fished and whatever through the tribe. Yeah. I was on the, I don't remember what year it was. I was on the first conservation board or committee for whiter and we drafted the uh, regulations and, and laws for hunting and fishing and so hired the uh, conservation officers it was in 78 <laughs> question what kind of fish did you catch hmm. you name it. <laughs> so the fiddle like them all they liked, you know what they liked was uh, well that a white fish. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> My grandma had uh, friends over there that you know they knew when she go fishing, you know, netting. So she always had a you know somebody to go sell them to. What do you do with your furs? So them. Where at? Or you know, skin them and stretch them and all over wherever I got the best price. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have to travel very far? No. No. There's, you know, sometimes they come right to the right to the village. Did you tan your eyes too? No, I, I, my grandma did once, mm-hmm. but she didn't do it all the time. Said, but she knew how. I understand why it's a whole lot of work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, from them, my grandparents. <clears throat> They went to, they were forced to go to boarding school. My grandfather was placed at, at uh, Flandreau Indian boarding school. Flandreau, South Dakota. My grandma did that, went there too. And he, I think he was about eight years old when they took him. And then he said uh, he didn't come home until he was 16. Not once, ever. I said, didn't you get lonesome? He said, yeah. He said, there used to be a, uh, a wooden water tower on, on the campus. He said, we weren't supposed to crawl up there, <coughs> but he said, I used to go up there and sit up there for hours, he said, and look north and cry. Mm-hmm. So long, so. <coughs> so, grandma went, oh, my grandma, she, 
helps to learn how to write. You know, she had beautiful handwriting. I learned how to love learning from them. I don't know how it was natural, I guess. But education was extremely important to learn how to get along with people and to do things. When I, I graduated from high school in 63, right, when the, I started school in Pine Point, <coughs> which had a uh, BIA, Bureau of Indian Affairs, day school, when I started, we didn't have kindergarten, we had first grade, so my mom, <coughs> I was four years old when they put me in first grade. <laughs> so, let's see. I, I learned from, ah, what's her name? My first grade teacher, Mrs. Miss Severson. And she taught me how to read. No, it was uh, Dick Jane, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> I remember it was wild. But when I went to school, they had running water, electricity, lights. <laughs> you know, it was incredible. I grew up, you know, when I, when I was growing up, there was no electricity. My grandpa and grandma didn't have electricity in their house until 62. Mm. So, I had to learn all that stuff. They had showers, you know, in the, in the school. I didn't know what those were either. Mm -hmm. Uh, from that humble beginning, <clears throat> and, uh, I can't even remember what year that was. Fifty-three. We moved to Park Rapids. Mm -hmm. My folks did, so I moved to them. My my dad got a job. In Park Rapids. <clears throat> so I moved there. But I spent more, most of my time in Pine Point all the time going, going, going over there and riding my bike. It's 21 miles from Park mm -hmm. Rapids to Foxbury. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know how many times I'd walk it. Ride my bicycle over there. I was over there. Riding the bus with my cousins to school. <clears throat> so, I went to the University of Minnesota at Morris, which uh, That was that fall, 63, for a year. And that was a long ways from home, mm -hmm. so... I, grabs, my father <coughs> told me, he said, why don't you go to Haskell? Haskell Indian School? <coughs> and that, that was too far away. You know, I ended up coming to the Bemidji and graduating. That was in 69? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, 
No, to same year. She didn't like, make it all the way. She, <coughs> she got married, you know, <coughs> but yeah. she was a uh, new here. Wow. My first wife was a Red Lake woman. Yeah. <coughs> we were all, we all knew each other. Yeah. And, uh, there wasn't that many native kids there. I didn't even know. There was uh, <coughs> the Aiken boys from yeah. Otago, and uh, there was two or three of them there, Roger, Joe, and Blair. Yeah. Red Lakers. There was a few Red Lakers. There was Marie Lightning. Uh, there was a few kids who were basically white kids who had some Native American that belonged to this, uh, they started a Ameren club. No, 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 no. Yeah, they started, they started that. Yeah. What does that word mean, or what? American Indian. Oh, it's cer certainly okay. Yeah. yeah. And it was just uh, one of the clubs on campus. Oh, yeah. And so the Indians could, uh, and so there was Don Broadwell. He, he was, I don't know, they, and uh, others who were uh, part Indian, but had never been around Native Americans, mm -hmm. so they, they learned a lot. But, uh, and before that, there had been some uh, Bacanaga boys yeah. at college mm -hmm. earlier, and some Lawrence boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Billy and... Yeah, all yeah. them kids. Mm -hmm. They were the first ones, I think. Yeah. But, and John it grew from there. Huh? John. John, John Bacanaga, his John. son... And then his son um, is a year older than me, and, and I grew up with John Jr. Who, who lives in Bemidji still? And there's a number of them are all <coughs> from Pottsford. Yeah. Pottsford on the White Earth Reservation has produced, I think, more college, in those days anyway, mm -hmm. more college kids. And it was the most, probably one of the most traditional areas of White Earth. Uh, uh, of the whole reservation, which is 36 square miles, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and uh, so it was quite a deal for, for uh, all those uh, college grads from Pottsford area. Yeah. So education was a big deal there. Still is. Yeah. With the new school, they have a new school, right, at Pine Point? I drove by a couple summers ago. Around there too. And the community center. And it's still kind of. Is that how it got its name? Was it um, mm. in the big pine woods? At the, is that how it got its name? Niji Wok. Niji Wok Kong. Niji Wok Kong. Niji Wok Kong. Niji Wok Kong. Times. I have a question then. Where does the name Litzau come from? That's certainly My not. Dad, I know. I oh, that's German. Yeah. Oh, we didn't get to German. Okay. You no. just said he came home from the war, and okay. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. My dad's German. Yeah, cousin. My my dad's cousins. I mean, my dad went back to fight his cousins too for World War One. My brothers went back to World War II, the Germans. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah, my dad's brother, Herman, was in World War I mm -hmm. and was wounded in France. So, but he survived. I didn't mean to interrupt, but it was uh, quite exciting. At BSU yeah. in the 60s. I mean, it wasn't a real uh, reactionary school like Berkeley or anything like that. It was pretty tame. Most of us were there. A lot of us were first generation college people. We wanted to get an education and get a job. And we were. My uh, my grandma's uncle 
was in the Civil War. For, for minute with Minnesota, he volunteers. Yeah. <clears throat> and he was Native American. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I know where he's buried too. Mm -hmm. You know, Grandma showed. I didn't know that until Grandma said her uncle. That was her uncle. Where is he buried? In the old Catholic cemetery in Pine, Pine Point. Wow. Mm -hmm. I just get, ironic, I just got done reading the last full measure, you know, which is about the there's sort of volunteers, so that's kind of interesting to say. Now there are several Indians in the Civil War. My grandfather was in the First World War. George. And of course my uncles. My uncle Bill, my oldest uncle, was in, in uh, South Pacific during the Second World War. My uh, other uncles were in France on D-Day. Mm -hmm. um, just a long history of uh, uh, veterans. Mm -hmm. My uh, cousins were in Vietnam, my brothers. Uh, I never went to service. So I was gonna. There's parts of your education that after BSU that I have no idea about. What you worked in the cities, I know. But I don't know quite where oh, yeah, where you I went to get your start teaching them. doctorate and all that kind of thing. And I don't know if you care to share that. Oh, yeah. Open book. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, went down to the city, start teaching. Then I got involved with uh, the Minnesota, no, what's, what do we call it? Minneapolis American Indian Center. We built the center. Uh, Franklin Avenue, that one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Built that in '73. Opened that up. And uh, I helped write grants to get programming for the center itself. Yeah. Yeah. And from there, you see, I come back home. I point, start teaching again. That was in the late seventies. And that's when I started on my master's degree or at PSU. Yeah. And I started working on that. And Eighty? Eighty one? Yeah, yeah, eighty one. I finished that. It took me a year to do that. <clears throat> and then I applied to the uh, University of North Dakota on Grand Forks for uh, my doctorate. My doctorate. In the counseling psych and uh, educational administration. And I graduate there in 84. Um, May. So you were there in the uh, uh, Dr. Petros and uh, Paul Wright and Jim Gruba. Those are some of the professors at the, oh, oh you're in the counseling department. I was thinking psychology, excuse me. So I don't know the counseling professors, but the psychology professors are the, some of the names I mentioned. Because I was there back in those days. So. But undergraduate school. Lila Tabor. They were in the psychology department, not counseling. I, yeah. I, 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 I spoke, I misspoke.
lot of nice people there. Mm -hmm. Well then, I graduated in 84 and then um, my wife was from Leech Lake, I still is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's when uh, April of that year, what was his name? He was the superintendent of the book school which mm -hmm. was over on the mission. Yeah. And it was just a, you know, just a bunch of small little yeah. cottage things. And so. By uh, and, and Rouge, kind yeah. of by and Rouge. Yeah. So anyway, they built the mm -hmm. reservation, <clears throat> got land from the forest, service where the the school is now they traded I can't remember how they did that they traded some other land for that land mm -hmm. so they could have a, a base you know by mm -hmm. well, anyway, the guy that was superintendent him and his family were killed in a car accident mm -hmm. that April oh, yeah. the gate Right on Highway 2. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I graduated, of course, at May, and I don't recall who submitted my name. <laughs> so, so, they asked me to apply, which I did. And I got to finish building a new school and mm. opening up the, the high school. Oh, wow. And there was a small elementary. Uh -huh. So, wow. We opened, opened the school up that August. Got teachers, bus drivers, the everyone mm -hmm. <clears throat> organized and got the curriculum set up. Mm -hmm. and that was a, a unbelievable. So we got the school open and dedicated. And, uh, I remember yeah. the first day oh, in September when students. All had to be bussed in from. Mm -hmm. I had to set up the routes from Oniga, Bemidji, here. Oh, we had kids coming from all over mm -hmm. to the school. You know, everyone wanted to go to school there. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know how many exactly. A, I, had, I had gone over to every village just talking about the school and everything and I didn't know how many kids were gonna show up. Mm -hmm. oh, my stomach was uh -huh. I never had butterflies yeah. ever. Right. And oh that first mm -hmm. day was uh, was incredible. The kids started you know, the bus showed up in the front of the school and kids started just piling out. It was incredible feeling to see all the children coming yeah. in, you know, high school and elementary. And it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, where, where was this school again? I'm sorry? I'm sorry. Yeah, spell it. U G O Bug O N A Y okay. Yijig. What does that mean? <laughs> hole in the day. At the chief hole in the day? Or not? Uh, that particular school 
There was some question about that one. Okay. When we first started. Yeah. <clears throat> Bogan and Gizri, there are actually two of them. Oh. Uh, the elder and the younger. Okay. But they're they're not related. They're yeah. not. Mm -hmm. They're not blood. They, well, no. Or, or. Right now. <laughs> The Bogunagizik, the, the school is named after, uh -huh. is after some guy from Sugar Point. Oh. You know, his name is Bogunagizik. Okay. And he's actually buried out there. Mm -hmm. At Sugar Point or at? Sugar Point. Uh, by the school. Okay, yeah. Sugar Point. Okay. Yeah, people got confused. Yeah. About that, because the, the two chief older and younger. Yeah. They were down by Gull Lake. Yeah, yeah, down by Brainerd. This North guy Brainerd. was from Leech Lake. Leech Lake, okay. And, and yeah. he wasn't, he was a headman. He was important in his own way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm glad to know that. And, and he's the one that they always say was part of that 1898 battle? Sugar Point Battle, battle? Point yeah. Uprising thing. Oh. Yeah. Which that's a whole big story. Well, well, there's a book that we have for sale in the bookstore yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last war yeah. uh, with the U.S. government. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, battle, I should say, not war. It's yeah. still going on. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My wife's ex-wife, uncle, was there. Oh, he was. Shooting at, shooting at soldiers. Yeah. So I, I didn't know that you you were there when they first opened that thing up. Yeah. yeah. I he was, was in charge. <laughs> he was the guy who did it. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, you know, uh, Leech Lake had had, at the high school, and then Cass Lake had had with the Indians, Indian students. They walked out. They walked out in 73 or 4, mm -hmm. and they more or less the tribe came up with this idea that mm -hmm. we'll go on our own. Yeah, kind of thing. Well, there was a trend about that time. In 72, uh, public law 638, I don't remember exactly what it was. Indian Self Determination and Education mm -hmm. Act. And it set up uh, funds for contract schools mm -hmm. or tribal schools. Mm -hmm. So that's what seeded the that funded the, that. Funded that. <laughs> so that bug school then opened. Uh, uh, what year was that? Or about uh, when you opened that school up? About what year was that? 84. 84, yeah. The new one. It had been in existence. Yeah. Yes, in the old location, At, the previous yeah, location, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I got there that July, you know, they said, oh, Buck School's over here. Well, they didn't have a curriculum, no organized uh, programs. You know, I said, I asked uh, <coughs> Don, you know, what about the buses? Uh, you know, he said, well, they, they come whenever, whenever. <laughs> you know, so they had to get everything organized. They didn't have nothing. So, But it was it was fun. Mm -hmm. I had to write grants. I wrote a grant for. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Our well, job. Yeah. You get annoying stuff. Yeah, glad you could come. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hope to see you next time. He's, He's got, got a job. He has to go. Yeah, some people. <laughs> Thanks for coming. For a grant for uh, the elementary part, it was too small. We 
get such a uh, demand for elementary kids. We had to add space. So I got uh, uh, Port Foundation and a couple other, one from uh, Grand Rapids. Mm. Blandon. Yeah, Blandon. Blandon. Yeah, Blandon. And another one. They all contributed to wonderful building on classrooms. Wonderful. Yeah, that's good. And we didn't. We had a library, but there are no books. Mm -hmm. No librarian. So I wrote a wrote a grant for a core collection and the librarian, and that was funded by the Ford Foundation. Wow. And some other things too. Huh. Yeah. I was I was at the school for two years every day, even on weekends. Wow. Except for Christmas. Huh. I was I stayed home Christmas each year. <laughs> that was that much time I put in it. Hmm. Were you living in Bogich then? Uh, initially I did. Then we got a house in Detroit, uh, that's like, oh. Yeah. Wow. I'm not familiar with the school there. How many grades are there now? Is college too? Is that correct? Is, uh, what's... I'm not sure, but it was high school and elementary. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the college is in Cass Lake. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Bob McGee. Yeah, well, we're going to go to lunch afterwards. we got a lot of things to catch up yeah. on with our old roommate. So, but. Now, I know that one story I remember, we weren't in contact too much during this period. I was already teaching in the lake and remarried and everything. And that. But your daughter, or your wife, ex-wife, or whatever, uh, were instrumental in changing the name of Squaw Point, was that it? Yeah. To Hope Point. Yeah. Good for them. Because of the derogatory yeah. Yeah. business with that. Which is Weren't they high school girls at Cass Lake at the time? Was it that that situation when, when they went uh, to the legislature to change all the names in Minnesota? There were a couple of high school girls from Cass Lake, and they got my daughter. Skip, and Skip Finn was uh, helping them out, I think. Yeah. So that was your daughter, was one of them? Yeah. Oh, bless her heart. Good. Yeah. That was a big deal. Her and her husband just retired from uh, wow, I feel the Army. Oh, wow. <laughs> just uh, this past August. Okay. Uh, he was a. Uh, he is a uh, Green Beret. Mm. Wow. He was in Iraq and mm. Afghanistan. Several times. And their son, my grandson, is now a Green Beret guy. Wow. He goes all over the wow. world. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, changing the name, did that take quite a while? Change what name? Uh, the, oh. That. I don't remember. Well, it became a law in Minnesota, and then. Skip. I mean, it was a legislative thing that happened, and then it, yeah. Skip Finn was in, uh, was, was it the senator, senator here? Yeah, the, the state senator at the time. I lived in Minneapolis back then, but or, or Brainerd, I think, but I, I remember reading all this stuff. Yeah. And so he he was the one that introduced it. I don't know if, if he had any co-authors or not, but, you know, that's his home there is, uh, is Cass Lake. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I remember seeing the change. interviews of the girls on the news. Squaw Lake, you know, the town of Squaw yeah. Lake. Yeah. But uh, there was some reason they they didn't want the the leaders there, civic leaders didn't want to change it. They didn't. Yeah. But they changed the name of the lake itself oh. to Nature Lake. Mm. Oh. They could you know that's yeah. under the yeah. guise of the state. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do that. Mm. Lausch, Lausch was the other girl. Oh yeah, okay. 
Yeah, for Angie, I think. Okay. That would be a good follow-up story or a his, <laughs> uh, to the news person here. <laughs> yeah, that would be a kind of interesting little... You know, revisit that story. Um, it's yeah. it's only, it's no more than 30 years ago. Um, yeah, I'm not uh, from the local area, so... Right. Yeah. Although this affected the whole state of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like learning, learning about um, things that have happened in like the Bermuda area. Yes, like, yes. No, uh, yeah, no. Thank you for what you're doing. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. My grandpa became a U.S. citizen when he joined the army. Mm -hmm. yeah. In uh, in 1924, June 2nd. Uh, my grandma became a U.S. citizen. Yeah, that's when the Supreme Court, uh, um, the Supreme Court that year declared, uh, uh Congress passed yeah, an Congress passed, uh, which is kind of, a, a, it's an oxymoron because obviously they were already here first, but they weren't U.S. citizens until 1924. Right. Couldn't vote, obviously. Right. But they could serve in the, the military. Yeah. And they could get citizenship. There. And they could then own land off of oh, a reservation. And couldn't it's only drink, though. Not even, huh? <laughs> couldn't drink. drink, no, no. Grandpa said no, he couldn't, he couldn't want not to Not legally, no not he legally they couldn't. couldn't. No. Yeah. And it's not even a hundred years ago. So was that old log place that your great grandpa built still there? It burned down. It did. Okay. Yeah. Well, I go there every year. Yes. It's a precious place. Yeah. Still, still my name too. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I got uh, what I call land assignments. Mm -hmm. so. How? How do? How does that how does that transfer then? So whenever you transfer it someday, how does that get done? Do you go through the tribe to have that done, yeah. or yeah, the yeah, reservation. yeah. I, I thought so. I, I I just didn't know yeah. if you have to. So uh, my do. question would be on this eighty acres by four point. Is that all divided up into little? Yeah, like that, that that's crazy. Oh, well, my grandpa had it when my his mother. Then uh, when uh, when he was at boarding school, he come home. He said he walked into the, where they were living, looked around for his mother. He didn't see her. He asked his dad, "Where's my mother?" And. Uh, uh, my great grandfather told him his name was David, David Norcross. Told him that she had passed away mm -hmm. while he was gone. Mm -hmm. She had washed dishes, was washing dishes, and cut herself on a butch knife mm -hmm. and got uh, butt poisoning. Yeah, and they lived so far yeah, into right. the woods, you know, they couldn't go get medical. So, <clears throat> my grandfather then inherited her allotment, mm -hmm. which was 160 acres, mm -hmm. plus his acreage, 160 acres, so it was 320 acres. Were they all next to each other? Were they all joined? Or Yeah, good, that's even better. Well, so grandpa was old enough, he joined the army. And then when he come home, he said, when he was growing up, mm -hmm. there was all these big white pines in Norway, oh, so thick, he said, and, you know, huge, where his land was. Yeah. When he come home from the service, his dad had sold his, his, uh, lumber? Horse to yeah, the lumber, or the wood. Trees. The trees, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It was all clear cut. Clear cut, yeah. yeah. Isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah. He said I was so disgusted. Oh, of course. All that virgin white pine there. Yeah. He said there used to be uh, underneath the trees during the summer. There's like under the needles and mm -hmm. stuff.
so ice-like. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That thick. Yes, yeah. wow. Uh, that was incredible. Yeah. Huh. So did this land get down the line into smaller and smaller well, pieces? Well, so there's, you know, Grandpa, then his children, and their children, mm -hmm. you know, which is me and everybody else, all had a piece of the pie, mm -hmm. you know, and now our children, you know, mm -hmm. we all have children, mm -hmm. you know. It gets, it spreads out. So we all have a little chunk, chunk of land. Mm -hmm. uh, you, there, is there any way to... Uh, I mean, is it taxed? Is it taxed? No, it's not taxed. No. Right. They tried. Yeah. Becker County did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, so you, you wouldn't lose it through taxation. No. It's like no. It's ours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, it's a family home. Yeah. 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 I can go live there if I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a a anybody could, I suppose. Yeah. Does anybody live on it at all? Oh. If you knew where it was, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, I don't think anybody would want to live there. It's so damn deep in the woods. <laughs> it is. It's way... Is there a road left to get there or not oh, much? Oh, yeah, there's roads in there. But that's it. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty arcade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds beautiful. I'm sorry? Oh, uh, yeah. The scrubby boy. Yeah. Oh. It, which way from many point is it? You know, uh, there's a Boy Scout camp. Yeah. On many point. Boy Scout camp. The sea is on the east side of, uh, you know, as kind of hard. When you go, come from Osford by point, going west, then you go past, what's that river called? Otter Tail? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then, then you turn north around the west side of Round Lake. Round. And then you go around like that, and then our land is right here, and then there's this road that goes along the north side, of uh, Round Lake and Mini Point, oh. across the river there. Mm -hmm. Then you go around and then up around to the east side of uh, Mini Point. Mm -hmm. And then you run into Boy Scout. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there. Is that the same Round Lake as near Ice Cracking? Or a different one? Yeah. Ice Cracking is south of Round Lake. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's, it's been years since they've been there, but okay. So I know which neighbor you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Back in, uh, I know some history about Round Lake you know, in some of our readings. Uh, and Nichols Chisholm Lumber Company, is Commonwealth, is the one that cut all that yeah. area. Yeah. And they floated their logs down the Otter Tail to Frazee. Yeah. And at the outlet of Round Lake was a dam. Each of our whiter lumber, Indian lumber people. They were supposed to cut, 1902, I think, they were supposed to just cut the dead and down timber. Yes. Which was timber that had been, uh, was either down or going to be down. Yes. Or a disease. Scorched by fire. Yes. Which and some people <laughs> lit. did on purpose. Oh, yeah. It was not well, uncommon. But this Nichols Chisholm outfit was taking green timber. Yeah, I see. And the Indians working in the lumber business there said, stop them from going through that dam with all their lumber because they were cheating them yeah, out of the oh, yeah. green, good timber, not paying the high price that it would get. And they said they threatened the lumber company foreman, if you let any more timber up, we're going to blow this dam up. And they held up the timber floor out of the hole several weeks. 
finally the, they came to an agreement about it and they said, okay, when we go back in the spring, we can figure out <laughs> the timber that's green because it'll have sap coming out of the stumps. Yeah. And and we'll get paid for that. And so they opened the dam or let the Okay. But it was, uh, I, I don't know how much they got out of yeah. it. Yeah. Some. They figured some out. Yeah. So that was close to where you. Huh? So the, 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 the years were probably some of the trees were cut. <laughs> probably some of the trees. Grandpa said they used ride the ride those logs down the river. Yeah, I can't remember what they called them. There was a name for the guys with the yeah. shoes that had spikes yeah. on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any more? Uh, when was that? When they, they uh, when they did the uh, dam? Huh? When was that? When early nineteen hundreds. Yeah, early nineteen hundreds. I can't remember. Oh four, oh two, somewhere okay. in that area. Sure. I think. Uh, Very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And, and, and you know, this is the roommate Kenny that I remember. <laughs> Soft spoken, uh -huh. uh, raised by his grandparents, who, you know, uh, native grandparents have raised their grandchildren. So mm -hmm. they, they never spank them or anything. You know, mm -hmm. just tell them, you, know, you, you can't do that. Yeah. And you and you listen most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and uh, it was a very gentle upbringing where they uh, allowed the children to grow. Yeah. On their own, mm -hmm. not being uh, helicopter moms or whatever you call that. Yeah. You know, just, uh, you learn by watching. Mm -hmm. And a tremendous memory because I don't see any paper. He's got no notes. I showed him paper. No! <laughs> he threw it in his car. He said, I don't need these. <laughs> it was actually a. Uh, <laughs> Seven, I think I, I wrote that. Oh, uh, some of the teachers wanted to know about Indian kids and yeah. our culture. And were your were your grandparents? And I had one last. Were your grandparents uh, Catholic then, kind of, or oh, yeah, in between? Oh well, yeah, that's another story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see yeah, I, I know. <laughs> my uh, my. Grandpa Lightning and Grandmother became Catholic. I'm trying to remember the father's name. Uh, but he had the church around Pine Point there. Yeah. And oh, I almost had it. Thomason? No. No, it starts with a W, I think. This is, yeah, they, anyway, they, uh, they became Catholic, and then my grandparents were Catholic. How old were you when they passed your grandparents? About, or about? My grandfather passed away when he was 87. Mm -hmm. That was in 82. Oh, yeah. Yeah, somewhere. Uh -huh. He was born in 1897. Oh, yeah. Or 1896. 1896. Uh, he was 87. Wow. Yeah. Grandma passed away uh, in 72. Well, then, lived a good long life. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you, Grandma. Oh, I, I miss her every day. Mm -hmm. She was so nice. And, uh, she uh, she gave me a beaded hmm. thing, which I wore under my t-shirt, and of course it got all sweaty and yeah. thread broke. And, uh, I got pieces of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we're trying to take it very care of it. Yeah. Thank 
Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you so much.